I feel like we haven't done this for ages. Yeah, it's probably been about a month because the last episode was the pre-recorded one with uh, Matt Parker. So, yeah. Yeah, you're yeah. right. Do you remember how to ride this horse? I do. Edward rode a pony for the first time a week ago. Oh, really? Like a cute little Shetland pony? Yeah, it's ridiculously cute. There's there's not much cuter than a little tiny kid that's your kid riding a pony. Oh, that's great. Yeah. The great thing is you could actually go to Shetland and ride with a Shetland pony in Shetland. We're going to some place in the mountains in Europe in a few weeks where, where there's loads and loads of ponies. Like even the childcare place takes them out for pony rides. So it's like Pony Central. Did he have a little cowboy hat? He didn't have a cowboy hat because he was wearing a helmet. Oh, of course. And he loves wearing a helmet because he knows when he wears a helmet, he's going to either be riding a scooter, a skateboard, a bike or a pony. Right. I love it though because when he wears a helmet to ride on his bike or his scooter and then he goes and does something else like on the playground, he's quite happy just to keep his helmet on. And there's nothing I love more than him playing while wearing a helmet. Mm -hmm. It's like very <laughs> safe feeling. <laughs> <laughs> he could wear a helmet all his life and I'd be happy. <laughs> it's like, Dad, why are you getting all that bubble wrap out? I wonder if you could measure, like, what horsepower the pony was. Half a horsepower, mm. quarter of a horsepower. I do think that all measurements in the world should be transferred from horsepower to pony power because pony power just sounds heaps cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you get like a little boost, like your Ferrari's even more pony power. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Ten thousand horsepower or fifteen thousand pony power. Quick parish notices. In the last episode, when we spoke to Matt Parker, he had the idea of "I ate when that happens," where he talked about how he gets really irritated by the number eight being upside down sometimes. And we encouraged other people to tell us their, their little minor annoyances like that. We had um, Gravity Tortoise said, I don't know if this is the kind of upside down eight thing you were talking about. But for me, the months of September, October, November and December are annoying because they are not the seventh, eighth, ninth and tenth months. Mm. So obviously, you know, sept means seven, oct means eight, dec, ten. And yet, they don't line up. They're not the months they refer to. December should be the 10th month with deck, but it's not. It's the 12th month. September should be the 7th month, but it's not. It's the 9th month. This is very annoying for Gravity Tortoise. This rings a bell like there were a couple of others inserted at some stage. Oh, yeah, gee, that's oh, I'm sure. Uh, no doubt it links back to the church. The church is responsible for all annoying things in the world. <laughs> that's right. We want to feed more poor people, so we need to add in an extra bit here that stuffs up the calendar. So, I agree with I agree with that. That is like a- But my way of remembering what number the months are is that they're wrong. Like, I remember September. That's right. It's the 9th. Do you actually- I never think about that. I never think about- I just know them in my head, which are which, but I never- Oh, no. I, I, spe I Especially October in my mind map. Oct means eight, but it's the 10th month. I, I tell myself that every time. I'm figuring out what number October is, especially. I think of October, I immediately think, oh, it's two away from December. So it's definitely 10th. Ah, that's, that's interesting. How I, do it. I look at the end and go two back. That kind of mind mapping that one does is actually relates to one of my podcast ideas in the future. So we'll, we'll come back to that because I love the way people have these little ways of remembering things, but not also just ways of remembering things, but ways of locating things. We'll come back oh, to that another day. I, I, I'm dying to talk about that because, but I don't know if this is related or not, but the way, I'll just say it and you don't have to, you know, like engage me. But when you count numbers, I realise that I have, I, it, there's, a, there's a picture in my mind of the trail of numbers in a certain order. And then the, the teens go across and the 20s go up. And I've never heard anyone, have you, do you have a mental picture in your mind? When, you, when I say 23, are you visualising a big long line and, and it's there in a line or what? No, what are you thinking really. about? I, I sometimes think of them maybe in a line for certain purposes, just like one continuous line, but no, not so much numbers. I know a lot of people associate numbers with colours. Uh, I've heard a lot of talk about that in my over the course of my number file career, but we'll have to come back to this, Tim. I am very interested I am interested. Yes, yes. Come back to it. In the meantime, I'm going to, have to think about it a little bit more and I'm going to try and 
It's a three-dimensional image. I'll see if I can map it or draw it somehow, and I like then it. I can explain what I mean. Possible number file video on the cards here, Tim. You could make your number file debut. Ooh, <laughs> that's exciting. Funnily enough, there's a question about that in the request room today, um, but we'll come to that when we do the request room. Okay, okay. Um, uh, still on the I ate when that happens topic, Paul Zoltan said, my upside down eight equivalent is country flags being stretched to fit a single ratio. For example, the square Swiss flag gets massacred sometimes when it's stretched out into a rectangle. Also, ugly maps. That's even more disturbing than flags. Mm. But that is a good one. I'm, I'm sensitive to that because not, not all flags are the same aspect ratio. They're different shaped rectangles and that. And famously, mm. the Swiss flag, of course, is a square. But sometimes if there's some reason that all the flags need to be shown at the same shape, some people will warp that Swiss flag out to a rectangle. Horrendous. What if, what if a, a nation just decided they wanted a triangle? Well, let me introduce you to Nepal. Have you seen the Nepalese flag? It's two oh, triangles. It? Oh, right. Hmm. I can't picture it. Let me Google well, it. Well, all right. Have a look. Very famously, the Nepalese flag is not a tri- is, is, uh, is two triangles stacked on top of each other. No, it is two. Look at that. But with the white in the negative space, or is that just not... No, there's no negative space. There's no negative there's space. Just the one I'm looking, one of them yeah. I look at here is. Oh right, that's very good. That's like one of those, um, you know, when you look up uh, the old sailing ship flags. How one means we've got this disease, another one means we we're from this country, and another one means hmm. we've got scurvy, and another one means we've got treasure, but don't come near us. Or you know what I mean? They've all got. Right. There's like a million different flags with different right. messages attached to them. There you go. And another one means we are Nepalese, and that's this one. We are Nepal. We've got huge mountains. Hmm. I will refer you again to a number file video about how to draw the Nepalese flag. The Nepalese flag can be drawn without pictures, just using a text explanation in the Nepalese constitution. And we made like a, a video about how you draw it, like it explains what to do. And if you've got like a ruler and a compass, you can draw it without seeing it, supposedly. It really is a very... <laughs> Nerdy channel, isn't it? <laughs> it is a little bit. It, it, does, it does skew a little bit nerdy. <laughs> I admit it. <laughs> Ideas for a podcast. It's what we like to do here. Tim, you said you had a bit of a short, quick, easy one. I thought I might let you go first then. Well, it's short. I don't know if it's easy, though. Ooh, I'm Okay. I'm going to... I'll, I'll do this one with a bit of a cold open, okay? Mm-hmm. So... <laughs> Are you okay, man? You got something stuck in your throat. <laughs> Are you beatboxing? Yes. <laughs> Can I name that beat? Can you name that beat? Oh, that's really hard because all beats are pretty much the same. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a clue. This beat. Oh, that was that was that teardrop by Massive Attack. No, but good guess, good guess, man. No, Thanks, this man. one. <laughs> this one. <laughs> You're just impressed. I know the name of that song. <laughs> <laughs> this one and the next one both come from your little CD collection in 1995 when you first got a CD player. <laughs> right. So it's one of about eight CDs that you owned at the time. I'll do it again. I'll do it again. Is it a Michael Jackson song? Yes. Uh, hmm. Well, think nah, about which Michael it? Jackson album you own. Well, I had like, I had history. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that, that was like a greatest hits history. One side was, and the other side, it was new songs. Hmm. Think about the singles that came off that album. Uh, I need to change the settings on my audio here because it's... Um, <laughs> it's sounding a bit crap, and that can't be possibly yeah. me. <laughs> I know, I've got it. I've got it in the mode where I should be able to hear you properly. Uh, <laughs> You've got it in the Tim yeah. beatbox mode. It's like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, which is also known as mute. <laughs> it's. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a clue. It starts like this. I'll, I'll see if I can mm. put in a bit of the tune over the top. Oh, I, okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. I can't do the mm, as well. 
Yeah, as well. Oh, I know it now. I know it. On and on and on. He goes. Bist and beep, bum, bin, bin. How does it feel? How does it feel? Oh, Stranger in Moscow. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Well, okay. It took you a while. No, That's you sang the song good. to me. <laughs> 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 you sang the words to the song, which helped, which I don't think was in the spirit of your beat idea. No, it's not. This is mm. my podcast idea is called The Human Beatbox. Okay. Where people come on and do their yep. favourite beat and, <laughs> and uh, talk about why it's their favourite beat and imitate their favourite beat. And if you like, there could be a competition where the person has to guess what the beat is right from the start. Mm. I, I do this subconsciously all the time. I just find myself doing a beat. And I do that one all the time as well. I'm not a particularly big fan of the song, but it's just yeah. one that comes to mind explicitly. Yeah, that's, it's got a cool start, that song. Do you want me to do the next one? See if you can guess that. Go on then, yep. Yep. It's a ballad as well. Nah. I was bruised and battered. I couldn't. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, Streets of Philadelphia. Very good. Very good. Yeah. Yes. Bruce Springsteen. Yeah. Well, again, you had to sing the words to me before I could get it. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm saying I'm, very I'm, good. I'm okay meeting. knowing the lyrics of the song. <laughs> lyrics are a bit easier. The, the human singer of songs is not quite the same as the human beatbox, but all right. <laughs> There's another idea called Tim sings a song to Brady and Brady goes, oh, I know that song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One more from your collection, right, from the time. Okay. <laughs> this one's quiet for a long time and then it goes. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> money for nothing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's a guitar well, riff that comes in at some point. I'm, I can now put, you're going to hate that because I can now put your guitar riff together with that drum solo. <laughs> <laughs> the drum solo. <laughs> I can join the two together just like this. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> oh, the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> Gradually, over time, Tim is going to human beatbox every part of that song so I can put it all together into like a big jigsaw puzzle. <laughs> The irony is I'm better at making the drums with my mouth than I am playing the guitar, playing the guitar. (laughs) Uh, It's debatable, but all right. (laughs) Uh, In terms of an idea, I mean, I found it quite fun. Mm. Uh, I don't know what the listeners will think. I mean, the one plus point I will give it is it's very suited to the medium. Mm -hmm. It's very good as an audio experience. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. I'd love to do one back to you, but just nothing's coming to me, and I don't really, I don't really define many songs by their beat. Nah, I got nothing at the moment. The human beatbox. human beatbox. Mm-hmm. All right, mm-hmm. give me, give me one more. Give me one, give me one more. Not from my CD collection. Oh, let me, let me just. I've got. Does human beatbox have to only be like? Can it only be the drum component of songs, or can you beatbox other aspects of the song? No, I think it's got to be. I think it's just got to be the beat. I think if you start doing the bow, 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 you're doing the riff, and that's a, that's a totally different podcast idea, which is what I'll do in the next episode of The Unmade okay. Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then we'll move on to synth parts and then, <laughs> and then back, background vocals and triangle and, and all that kind of stuff as well. Okay, okay, here's one. Here's one. I, this may have been in – I don't think it was in your collection, actually. It's very minimal. It's just like – Is that just someone like hitting the hi hat? <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which is very. I guess that's maybe may a little bit too hard. What was it? Sing the sing the sing it to me, and then I'll get it again in the usual way. Everybody hurts. 
<laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Is it Everybody Hurts by R.E.M.? <laughs> yes. Very good, right. man. Very <laughs> Uh, Hang on, let me try Bon Jovi's Living on a Prayer and see if you get that one. <laughs> <laughs> Would you describe beatboxing as one of your strengths? Ah, oh, look, I, I'm more humble than that, man. Um, <laughs> I, I wouldn't say that I was up there with that, uh, what's his name, Winslow from the Police Academy mm. movies. Um, mm. He's he's a little bit better at it than me. Mm. Um, mm. But... Look, I, I – no, no, so I would say no. No, I'm not very good at beatboxing. Right. But I do think I've perfected that Stranger in Moscow by Michael Jackson. I think I've – that comes to mind like an earworm and I do it over and over and over. And okay. I oh, think well. I, I'm very I'm very happy with that one. I'm yep. less happy with every other one. Well, do you want to see us out then with uh, Stranger in Moscow again? It's time for a bit of a, a recollection of Tim's recent trip to England. It's time for another episode of Tim in England. Play the music. Tim in England. Okay, Tim, we're about to walk into a garden, an English... Like a, it's like a park. Yeah. But they often call them gardens here in the UK. And there's this little parks dotted around amongst residential areas with, a, with trees and a pathway. And so we're walking into a lovely, quaint English garden. My boy loves coming and playing in this garden. Oh, this is lovely, yes. The thing I love are the old trees. You have such lovely old oak trees and things like that in these mm. sort of parks. Mm. Look at, well, here's it. You're going to like this. Look at this tree here. Look what we've got here. Oh, wow. Look, a little door down the bottom. They've put a little, someone's put a little doorway at the bottom of this tree, so it looks like a, like a magic faraway tree, like a fairy lives in there. Do you want to open it? Sometimes there are things in there. I don't know if there will be today. There we Anything go. in there? A, there's a tiny little latch, which is too small for my fingers. No. Nothing in there? No little doll or fairy or anything? No. No, there's a leaf. Just leaves. <laughs> Just debris. Obviously out somewhere. That's gorgeous. I'm trying to think of the Winnie the Pooh character that lives in a tree. Is it Rabbit lives in a tr the bottom of a tree? I can't remember. The bottom of the magic faraway tree. Who's at the bottom of the magic faraway tree? It's oh. not the angry pixie, is it? Where does that? I think the angry pixie might live at the bottom of the magic faraway tree. Isn't that right, and gets upset when Dame Washalot throws. Oh, everyone gets upset when Dame Washalot throws the water down. Mm. Except Moonface, who lives above that. Yes, He's very wise. Saucepan man, silky, Sorry. Mister. What's his name? <laughs> I always think this is a very magic faraway tree, this little garden here. That's true. We'll go, on the way back, we'll go into the bookshop and I'll buy something like that. Love the magic faraway tree. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's just, it, the word enchanting just yeah. fits that English well, it's park. It's the enchanted wood, isn't it, of the magic well, faraway tree? Well, there we go. Yes, that's right. But that's, just even the word it says it's so enchanting, I just think, well, that, that's just, something must be happening in English. And there's a little bit of cover in here because of the big trees from the drizzle. Maybe that's why English love their parks so much. You get away from the drizzle. We've got people walking their dogs. Bringing their children, some wild flowers. Oh, lovely. There's usually sort of a, a slightly scary part of the garden as well, you know, like where it gets a bit dark oh, and yeah. where perhaps, you know. I remember in Australia there was a park we used to go to and there was a little treed area like that area over to the left where no one would ever go and play. Mm. And there was a rumour that like a murdered girl had been found there once. Yes. Completely untrue. <laughs> but, it was, but, but it made me completely terrified to go anywhere near it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yes. Let's go over here. I know this is this is our former dog walker. I know this dog walker. This is this is our dog walker. Oh right. And dog trainer. So I say, hey Kaz, nice and rainy, isn't it? Look, we're already talking about the weather. This is my friend Tim. Hello. How are you going? I'm Kaz. Tim from Australia. Yeah. We're making little recordings of what it's like to walk around in England today. So and I said, oh look, everyone's walking their dogs, and then I saw you. Who's? Yeah. How many dogs have you got with you? Are these are your you, dogs or? No, yeah. Well, these are just three I'm walking. So uh, Gracie and Cody are from the up the top. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just there. Yeah. So we're doing a lap around. See you soon. See you. Bye bye. Lovely to meet you. Winnie's doing well. Yeah, she's doing well. She's barking a bit. Still barking a bit. She might need a bit more, bit, bit more uh, training, but we'll get there. We'll get there. Brilliant thing about Kaz there, of course, is that she's wearing wellies, as you call them. Yes. Like, we call them gumboots in Australia, but they're, yeah, very English wellies. Yeah. People wear them for all sorts of things, whereas we wear them only in the garden. Oh, no, we wear, uh, uh, the main place I wear my wellies is to the beach. <laughs> well, there you go. That is very English. Yeah. <laughs> you would never wear your wellies to the beach in Australia. No, no, yeah, we always, we're going to the beach, well, get, pack your wellies. <laughs> pack your, because it's going to be a rocky, wet, cold experience rather than a sandy, hot experience. Yeah. 
really lovely state. Right, we're coming to the end of the garden now. We've walked, we've walked through the garden. Uh, and there's a garden wall with a gate, which yeah. is in itself a very English thing, I think. Stone wall, stone wall garden, lovely. Okay, Tim, here's another very, very English experience, mm. and that is the English seaside. And I know, mm -hmm. I know being from Australia and from Adelaide, you're not unaccustomed to a nice beach, but this is, English do beaches different uh, a lot of the time. And this is, this is classic. This is like, uh, we're, we're at a, a beach called Clevedon Beach, and uh, it's covered in rock or shingle. We call it a shingle beach. It's like, it's gray. We're, at the, we're on the Bristol Channel. On a good day, you can see across to Wales, but today's, because it's so misly and gray, mm. we can't even see to the other side of the, of the channel. Oh, well, we can just see. We can just see Wales there on the horizon. A bit of dark, oh, right. yeah. That dark land over there. You can see Wales in, off the Adelaide coast as well, but not, not the country there. <laughs> no, <laughs> the, the creature. So let's walk down this little stairway and we'll walk down onto the beach. Can I just say, when you say beach, like, a, a, a significant, like the beach is essentially sand and water. Here, there's a, there, are, there are literally no grains of sand. There is no sand whatsoever. Well, a beach to you is sand and water. A beach to English people is this a lot of the time. And on a nice day, people will be down here with like towels and picnic rugs and umbrellas. They, they sit on this, yeah, do they? Yeah, it'll be full of people. It'll, it'll be heaving on the weekend, on a nice weekend. This will be absolutely heaving with people. Golly gosh. And, and do they play beach cricket? Well, no, you can't play beach cricket on this, of course. No. no. But uh, let's step down onto the shingle. Hopefully people can hear it. Let me. There's the stones. My little boy loves coming down here and picking up stones and throwing them and putting them into rock pools. Oh yeah, skipping stones is fantastic. So being from the sandy beaches of Australia, this mm. is, you're nonplussed by this, eh? You're, you're... Look, I, as I've said before, my favourite time at the beach is winter, actually. Mm. I love going down and just being near the beach. And, um, but still, the sand is a part of that. So it is, this, this I, I do like this. I like this. I like the idea of coming, sitting in the car nearby or at a cafe reading. It does have a lovely ambiance to it. It's just in summer... It'd annoy me. I'd want to get on the sand and run around and rush into the water. Yeah. But it, it's a head, well, yeah, different way. People do swim here, but this is not a good swimming beach, partly because you've got to get through all that seaweed and mud and sludge to get to the water. And also <laughs> the water here in the Bristol Channel is a bit, it's a bit dirty and muddy and churned up a bit. It's not a beautiful, you rarely get blue water here. Uh, you sometimes do, but it's quite rare. So I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't swim here. I, I have to say, of course, the, the English people are not, this isn't a life choice. Like this is the beach they've been given. It's not like they went, they saw the sand and went, no, no, we'll go with the stones. Yeah. It's, it's like, this just is the beach and this is where you come to, to yeah. cool off and be. And about two hours from here, you start getting like Devon and Cornwall and then you get some of the world's best beaches for massive sandy beaches, like Australian level. Oh, right. Sandy yeah, beaches. Right. I was on one just a few days ago that was like as good as any Australian beach, but they are few and far between in the UK. And this sort of shingly beach... A bit, bit of rocky cragginess, all mm. seaweed and stuff. But when the tide is high uh, and it's stormy, you'll get waves crashing into that wall behind you there and the water going oh, onto that's the road. Cool. Wow, they love that. Yeah, mm. that's great. That's brilliant. Mm. There is a novel I like called On Chessel Beach, and that's an English novel. And I, I do love that. Sounds lovely in English, like Chessel Beach mm. standing there. That's, that gives me this feeling. And that's a shingly beach, isn't it, Chessel Beach? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's barely a novel, is it? It's just like a novella. It won some award. It was always controversial because it was so short. People said, should they really be getting novel awards because it was so short? Mm, I'm not sure if it won the... It didn't win the Booker. I think it was nominated, though. It's a film as well, if people want to look at it. I haven't seen the film, though. And the other distinctive thing, of course, about Clevedon Beach is we have the Clevedon Pier next to us, which is a beautiful metal pier, not a wooden pier. Yeah, right. And it is the only grade one listed pier in all of the United Kingdom. What does grade one mean? Like top level, like maximum protection, maximum, you know, super duperness. Right. So, so an upstairs pier rather than a downstairs pier. Yeah, it's like number, it's absolute, you know, absolute top. Stamp. Is everything in England either upper class or lower class? Yeah, every, <laughs> you've got the first class stamps, second class stamps, first class heritage listing. <laughs> That's beautiful. I love it. it's got that, it, it's, it's a faded green. Is it the copper or the metal that goes that green colour? Yeah, it is. It's the metal has gone a lovely, lovely worn. Is it patina? I don't know what you call it. I don't know, but it, it looks good. I'll take a picture of Tim standing here on the beach looking. Yeah, pull your trousers up. Hoix <laughs> 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 the trousers up. On the shingly beach, Clevedon Pier behind him. Loving it. 
loving it. All right, so there we go. A little walk in the gardens and uh, down to the seaside. Did that bring back nice memories for you, Tim? It did. It did. Yes, I'd forgotten we'd recorded that one. That was lovely in the mm. wood and on Chesil Beach. Beautiful. <laughs> lovely. Do you, know what we re- do you know what we recorded when we were there? I encourage you to pick up some stones to take back to your girls. And I may have or may not have said that occasionally my little boy picks up stones and brings them home. And then you made some wisecrack about, are you allowed to take stones home from the beach? And I confidently mm. said, yes, of course you can. And then we went off into a whole conversation about places we'd taken stones from. But when I was editing it yet last night, it turns out that uh, you can't take stones from English beaches. It's illegal. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, mm. So I didn't, I didn't, some of the things we said, I didn't want committed to audio. So, uh, <laughs> so, so I had to cut that bit short. <laughs> But we're talking about them now. You're confessing something now. No, 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 no. You didn't take any stones, though, and I've never taken stones from a beach. No one's ever taken stones from a beach. It's never happened. All right. We talked about it, like, jokingly. Right, right, right. okay. You know, like, like, imagine if someone did it. But no, Mm. we didn't do it. Yeah. Okay. All right. right. Yeah. It's illegal to take stones from UK beaches. I don't don't know if they would prosecute a two-year-old, but just to be on the safe side, my two-year-old has never done it either. And there's not a little shelf in my house full of stones from beaches either. <laughs> there's definitely not one of those. One of those bobbies will come and get you. That would be such a great episode of the of Tim in England if there had been a the member <laughs> of the bobby. constabulatory on the door saying, hello, hello, mm. hello, what's going on here? I promise you Tim in England is about to get a little bit more exciting. Those were the first two we recorded. <laughs> the, 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 one, the one last time at the post box and this one we recorded as we walked around. But we're, things are going to, we're going to up the ante soon. There's going to be pubs, KFC, graveyards, mm. um, scones and tea, elderly women, Tim flirting with elderly women at a coffee shop. <laughs> we're going to have all English. of that coming It's a very soon. English thing to do. Yes. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> if England is anything, it is elderly ladies. That's what England is. Yep. England- <laughs> Tim, I don't know how good the audio is yet because I haven't listened back, but Tim's conversation with the elderly ladies while we're having tea and scones was one of my highlights of the trip, so I hope it's well recorded. (laughs) Tim was pulling out all the moves. I'll tell you something we haven't done for a long time, another segment, and there's been a little bit of like, I think people are missing it, so I think maybe we'll have a little comeback. It's time for... You got Spoon Tim from the Hine family collection? I do. I left to you by your father. D- d- was there when you, when your dad died? Was there mm. anything in his will up specifically about the spoons or have you just kind of taken them, you know, of your own volition? Well, it's the first thing that came to mind when he died. Um mm. <laughs> finally they're mine is the thought I had. <laughs> right. <laughs> It was like sort of this succession for spoons. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I rushed home from the hospital and straight, straight yeah. out to the shed. And yep. Just like upended the container over my head. Like they just poured down over me and I went, Mah! finally, they're mine. <laughs> what, like, what, like that money scene in an indecent proposal, rolling around in the bed with spoons all over you. <laughs> <laughs> with sh- sh- oh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was it was a glorious moment, and I um, no look, I I th- th- these were up in our house for many mm. many years, um, mm. and it was only when on the rack um, on the rack, yes, on racks, mm. Um, mm. Uh, and so I can't remember at what stage I I can't remember if when Mum moved after Dad died. If we packed them up then or if they had already been packed up into a container, I can't remember. I think they were already in a container. For some reason, mm. they had already been archived. Um, yeah. Probably to preserve them. Uh, yeah. So they, they were just in, in a sort of a container in the shed. Yeah, I can't remember. But anyway, it ended up at my place because mum moved into a smaller place. Did you, like, did you actually get your mum's permission? Like, did you say, mum, can I take the spoons or did you just take them? No, I just took them. I just thought, well, these. You like took- I took, yeah, yeah. Like I took all the other. I was cleaning out the shed. Like, and like I you just took was- all the money. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs money when you've got spoons? That's right. No, I, took- I took all the, um, 
the the tools, like all the you know drills and hardware and all that kind of stuff that was in the shed. Was your dad much of a handyman? I don't remember ever seeing your dad doing many handy things. Oh no, no, very much. Uh, you would have seen him very much in the latter part of his life, but no, no, very much a handyman. Yeah, particularly yeah. when I was young in Terralgan, he did a lot of work, and he had a lot mm. of tools. And so there were like it's really funny all the tools. You know, things that I'd bought him for Father's Day, like 15 years, 20 years before, and it's like, no, yeah. oh, yeah, that's my, it's my drill now. Great. There we go. Circle of life. And what spoon from the collection have you dug out today to, to share with us? There'll be pictures on the video and website, as always, yeah. people, if you want to go and have a look for yourself. It's not one that I've come across in the spoon collection before, and, and, but it is, um, the very famous, quintessential Australian uh, spoon. It's from the dog on the tucker box. Ah. Now, the dog, a, a tucker box in Australian, ye olde Australian parlance is like a lunch box, a box you take to, you know, for your lunch at work. And tucker, tucker means food. Tucker means food in Australia. That's right. Yeah. Mm. So a tucker box, but the dog on the tucker box is a um, small statue which is just outside Sydney or on the way to Sydney if you're driving from Melbourne or Adelaide. And yep. um, it, it goes back, to, I think there's an old myth, isn't there, a story about a man that was injured and the dog was very faithful and stayed near him and sat on his tocker box and minded his food. Or There's something about the loyalty of a dog. Wasn't it from a poem or a song or something? Oh, probably. Um, bush poetry or something like that. Yeah, I'm just having a little, I'm having a bit of a wiki now. It's a historical monument uh, located at Snake Gully, eight kilometres from Gundagai. It's near a big Gundagai, highway, that's isn't right. it? I've, I've been to it. Hmm. Yeah, there's like a place to stop off and eat and, and fill up the car with petrol, all that kind of stuff. The um, inspiration for the statue has been traced to a doggerel poem, uh, Bullocky Bill, published anonymously in 1857. Other references state the poem was published in 1880 in the Gundagai Times. But confirmation is hard to find. The poem humorously describes a series of misfortunes faced by a bullock driver, culminating in his dog either sitting on or spoiling the food in his tucker box. An Australian colloquialism for a box that holds food, similar to a lunchbox but larger. Uh, so, yeah, you, you can go and see this little statue monument of a <laughs> of a of a dog sitting on a tucker box, so. <laughs> and obviously they sell spoons of the monument, and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's what Tim has here—a spoon which has a little dog sitting on a tucker box up on the handle at the top there, as the as the decorative part. Looks very much like the statue. It does. Well, it's clearly the same uh, thing, but it's what does it say underneath the word tucker? Oh, underneath it says Gundagai, New South Wales, uh, which is the nearest big town. There's a very famous Australian song called The Road to Gundagai. Do you remember that song? I yeah. do know The Road to Gundagai, mm. yes. There's a shack heading back to an old forgotten track mm. on the road to Gundagai. Because of the dog on the tucker box statue is near Gundagai, I thought, oh, maybe that is from that song, but it's not. It's from this other poem. Yes. Mm. Okay. Uh, and in terms of how this uh, spoon came into the family collection, Presumably your dad was just doing the drive, that famous drive between Sydney and Melbourne along that highway and stopped in at Gundagai. Presumably. Yes, presumably he did. I have to say from a from a, a pure spoon appreciation point of view, it's a pretty it's pretty crap. Like the yeah. the it's flat on the back, so it's not three dimensional. It's more uh, of a it's three dimensional, of course, but it's you know, with a flat back a, a false back flat like a smooth flat back so on the yeah. other side the dog hasn't got texture and so it's not like a it's not a true representation of the statue no no it's not no more of a front-on depiction of the statue it's pretty bendy i could easily bend this in half oh, yeah cheap cheap spoon it does it feels like it feels like a pretty cheap spoon to be honest um, okay no, and nice to see a return of spoon of the week as well oh it's been a long time too long too long too long too long so this is the part of the podcast where we quickly announce the names of some of our Patreon supporters who are going to be sent prizes in the mail. Tim, I'll, I will announce the winners. And do you want to do mm -hmm. a little bit of beatboxing for each one? Sure. Sure. Okay. See if I can come up with a new beat for every a person. A new beat for each one. Okay. So mm -hmm. we're going to send one of our leather Australian nut key rings to Luke T from Quebec in Canada. Luke T. Luke T. Luke T. Luke T. That's just.
just for you, Luke. That's the Luke T beat. What have you got? This is a this is a good name to beat to. Ben Z from Nebraska. He's getting a spoon. Benzi, 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 Benzi. I see what you did there. I see what you did. People are probably sampling these, you know. These are going to appear. Oh, no everywhere. doubt, no doubt. I'm expecting, I'm expecting fully produced songs to be uh, bounced back to us in the next few weeks. We're going to send Spoon of the Week collector cards to. I'll do all three together, and you can give them like a combined beat. Mm-hmm. Uh, Robin from Wakefield in the UK, Elliot from Alaska, and Joe from Kentucky. Elliot and Kentucky are very tempting to put together. Elliot. Where's the first yeah. one from? Sorry. I, I Well, Robin know. is from Wakefield in the United Kingdom. That's not so. That's not so no. beat, beatboxy. You've got Elliot Alaska in there. Elliot's from Alaska. Elliot to Kentucky. Elliot to Kentucky. Elliot to Kentucky. Ah, see, Elliot you see you're Kentucky. turning the actual words into beats. Yes, This is I like know. a whole new totally I think that's of sort of like six, eight time or something. All right. Thank you very much. And thank you to those people for supporting us on Patreon. If you would like to have a prize sent to you, if you want to be in contention for that, go to patreon.com slash unmadefm. Patreon supporters also will get access to the request room. We have a cracking episode coming up today. I hope you're supporting us. But even if you're not, we love you too. Tim, Mm. time for an idea from me. Oh, all right. I have here a really basic, simple idea. Low-hanging fruit. In fact, Mm. it's so basic, we may have done it before. I don't know. Or if you're feeling energised and creative, I've got another idea that I can put to you, but it's going to require some energy from both of us. (laughs) Right. Okay, let's do the big one. Let's do the let's do the energy idea. Yes, yes. Go on. All right. My idea for a podcast, Tim, is called Imagine the Phone Call. And this is imagining real life events and things that have happened. Maybe some of them happened before the era of telephones. If that's the case, we'll pretend that's not the case. And I like to imagine a phone call between two people uh, as this event or moment or thing unfolds. Mm-hmm. And I think a good way for us to do it will be to to role play one because that would be the idea of this podcast. It would be a bit of oh, role play, a bit of acting, a bit of pretending. Ooh, a bit of pantomime. Got a got a military helicopter going past my house. Hang on a second. Very occasionally happens. Um, so Tim, let us role play. I would like you mm. to pretend to be the great film director Steven Spielberg. I can do that. I am going to pretend to be the fabulous. Composer John Williams. <laughs> right, yes. And the, here's the scenario. A few weeks ago, you showed me a rough cut of Jurassic Park and asked me if I would be able to score the, the movie for you. Mm. And now we have gotten on the phone together and you, you're asking me where things are at with the composition. Mm. Mm. Okay. Okay. So you can take okay. things away, Tim. We'll go ring, 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 ring. We're on the phone. Take it away, Mr. Spielberg. Are we doing accents or not? You think perhaps we oh, skip I, accents? I would think not. I would yes. think not. <laughs> but but you can try if you want. Um, <laughs> my accents aren't as strong as my beats, and my beats are not very strong. <laughs> I'm going to sound more like John Williamson than John Williams if my That's Australian right. accent. But yeah, but yeah, I'm John Williams. Go ahead, Mr. Spielberg. <laughs> however you want to do it. <laughs> G'day, John. How are you? It's Steve here. <laughs> Hi, Stephen. Yeah, I'm, I'm going really well. It's the, the film you showed me a couple of weeks ago, Jurassic Park. It's really stuck with me. Those are uh, those dinosaurs. Wow. They were they were really something. I think I think you're on a winner here. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Well, that's good. I'm also here. I'm in Poland at the moment filming Schindler's List while I'm editing Jurassic Park. Shouldn't this? That sounds fun. What's that about? <laughs> we'll come to that a bit later on. Okay. But if you've got any slower pieces, hold them over. Okay. Because <laughs> um, just coming back to Jurassic Park, which which uh, which yes. I'm editing at the moment. Uh, how are we going yeah. with the tune? Uh, have you got something good, that's come good. to mind? I've got. I've. I think I've got something. Oh, I've got something. Would you mind if I human beatbox it to you? Yes, well, that's, I was just about to say, yes. <laughs> Please either you get or get Tim Hine to send us a, a beatbox version. <laughs> I want you to imagine this, all right, you ready? Okay. Everything's like quite mellow mm. and it goes, hmm, 
But then it goes like this. No, no, no. No, no, no. What do you think? I think that's quite that has quite a bit of promise. Yes. I like it. Are you sure you didn't steal that from home alone or something? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it that's... just came to me in the night. I was just imagining all these dying I was all, and it's all like, you know, um you know that scene at the end where you show those uh pterodactyls Pterod- flying off the island. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You can have yes. it playing then. <laughs> That's right. That's, actually, I'm going to replace them with birds. You mistake. All right. <laughs> because it all ties back to the fact that they dinosaurs turned into birds. So I've dropped the whole pterodactyl oh, idea. I totally missed that. I missed yeah. that point. <laughs> yeah. But but still, I think that could play there. It could play in a few other places. Just, just give yeah. it to me again. What was it? No, 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 no. Like that. That's good. That's good. I think that's really good. I'd get, that's like, people great. with, like, you know, violins and trumpets and all that stuff to play it so it sounds, like, more posh. I wouldn't just do it myself with my mouth. Oh, no, no. I think – no, no, no. I, I, I've just been recording this call. I think we just use this. I think that's sounds I mean, I don't, I'm all right with that. <laughs> I'd be all right with that. But, what, are the, um, what are the words there? No, 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 no. No, no, no. Ah, that's Na, good. No, no, no. No, no, no. Like that, ah, that's but good. I could put I could put lyrics to it if you wanted. I could have something like you know say something about dinosaurs. It's hard because not a lot of stuff rhymes with dinosaur. I did no. try that originally, no. but um, but I in the end I decided lyrics because I was gonna have like I was gonna when you first see that big that big brachiosaur or brontosaur at the start with the big long mm. neck. I was thinking mm. of having something mm. going like it's the dinosaur, it's the dinosaur. <laughs> But then I thought, no, 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 no. It's more like less is more. Like, don't say the word dinosaur. Just use music. Yes, actually, that's good. Because we're showing the dinosaur, so we don't need to hear someone say, here's the dinosaur. You don't need to say it because no, people no. will see it. They'll probably mm. be saying themselves, oh, look, it's a dinosaur. Yeah, no, that's, that's good. So if I just put the music there, people can almost write the lyrics in their own head. I was see when I sent you the initial idea. Remember, it was bum bum ba dum bum ba dum bum ba dum. Mm. But I think that's a bit yeah, down because yeah. it's quite an uplifting yeah. moment. And the dinosaurs aren't the baddies, even though they eat people. No, no. Hmm. I mean some of I, with, for the some of those parts later in the film where the velociraptors start ripping people to pieces. Yeah. I am going for something a bit more dramatic uh, and like less inspirational. But I right, think, right. but I think yeah. we should hmm. come back to like the nice stuff. I think this is gonna. I think this. I think it'll work. I think it sounds pretty good. Have you got any other bits? Like maybe yeah. Have you got anything else? Maybe I'm thinking about when the helicopter flies. Onto the island for the first time. Yeah, for that bit, I was thinking. Like that. That's good. Like, yeah, like, no, that's like jaunty. Nice, nice. Yeah, no, that's good. That's very good. That's good. It's a little bit like what you did with um, Raiders of the Lost Ark, but it's a bit more mm. jaunty and up in the air. No. That's right. Yeah, mm. I'm. I'm still not happy with Raiders of the Lost Ark. I still think we should have gone with my rap concept. But do you, do you think so? it was a very hip hop oriented movie initially? Mm. But we went away from that. Yeah, I know. I mean, maybe you were right. Maybe you were right. But but I think I think this time I think this time I'm on the money. What are the lyrics of that one? Da 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 And then as it comes down next to the waterfall, which is a I did wonder when I was watching the film, would you build a helipad right next to a waterfall? But anyway, that's by the by. It looked good. It does uh, look good. But yeah. yeah. Well, we did do, build do, it there. Do, yeah. Do. Yeah. No, well, those two bits are very good. Yeah. No, that's that's nice, John. I like what you've done there. Good work. Get Thanks. again. Yeah. All right. That's probably some of your best work since the... Dun, 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 dun. Dun, yeah. dun, dun. That was good because that was the last time we sort of did a whole, you know, an animal sort of you know, killing hum- humans kind of film. I feel like I can tell you this now because it's been long enough since the film came out. But yeah. Hmm. That Jaws music, I reckon that took me about five minutes to write. <laughs> Did it? <laughs> Seriously. I didn't, e- I, didn't even, I didn't even try. I sent it to you as a joke. I thought, oh, he's gonna- Stevens is going to laugh. And then you bloody used it in the film <laughs> and everyone loves it. 
It was good. It was much better than what you initially said, which is what we used for Raiders of the Lost Ark. I just didn't buy it when the whenever the shark came in and it was dun 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 dun. People, it was like looking to celebrate the shark rather than run from it. It was too happy. The shark's march, I called that. Shark's march. Anyway, and then we then yeah. it blew up at the end, and we went. <laughs> anyway, anyway, uh, have you have you thought about my have you thought about though a musical motif for that bit, like at the end of Return of the Jedi, where that ghost of the shark just appears next to Anakin and Yoda? <laughs> I'm thinking, of, I'm still thinking of bringing that in. George wants to bring it in a later edition. He's always fiddling with the films, but I think we keep, he, keep uh, the music the same. I don't even listen to a word George says. He, he doesn't, know, doesn't know a thing about making movies. He doesn't. He but doesn't uh, know. yeah. Well, that's pretty right. good. Nice All right. work. Happy with that. Yeah, yeah, All right. No, well, thanks, pretty Stephen. Pretty and keep me up to date with this Schindler's List thing because I've got a few. I've got a few ideas for that as well. I'm thinking we could revisit maybe the Close Encounters thing. Do 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 do. Like yeah, that. I see what you're saying. No, no, no. This is where I think the hip hop is going to work really, really well. You're, anyway, I'll, I'll, look, I'll send you a copy of the film. Tell me about the film later. But, but yeah, no, no, no. Send me All the right. hip hop. Let's stick. Let's get this Jurassic Park stuff out the way. All right. All right. See you later. See ya. See you, mate. So that's my podcast idea, Tim. That's a that's a pretty good idea. I think that's a great idea. That was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Phone calls. Yeah. How many phone calls in history could we do? I don't know. Oh, that's How about great. this one? It's nineteen twelve. You're the chief executive of White Star Line, mm-hmm. and your your classy new ship, the Titanic, is just about is just about to finish its maiden voyage from. Uh, across the Atlantic and arrive in New York, and I'm one of your employees giving you a call early in the morning, all right? Oh, right, okay. So, you were- yeah. Hey, hey on, boss, it's is- me. What are the- it's Jonathan here. Jono, mate, how are you going? Oh, mate, I mean, sound That's all right. I- well, Where are you guys at? <laughs> I, have, I, have, I have good news mm. and bad news. Oh, give me the good news. The Titanic is... Insured. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. Why? Why would that matter? <clears throat> well, it's. It seems that, like that, you know that whole unsinkable thing we were going with. No, not the case. What do you mean? What are you talking about? The ship sank. Sank? What do you mean it sank? The ship can't sink. It's made of iron, sir. <laughs> I'm sure you it can. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that! <laughs> Set me up for that. Really, I can't. wow. Gosh, it's a mathematical certainty. <laughs> that's, 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 well, that is gonna make an incredible film one day. <laughs> it, it will make a good film. It will. Make, in fact, we'll probably make more from the film than we will from building the thing. God, oh, jeez, Louise, that's terrible. Was were yeah. were any souls lost? Yes, I believe. I believe many souls were lost. So. Oh dear! Mainly, Golly. mainly blokes. Oh, the women and children were saved. That's that's something. They women and children, but uh, the but the but the but the, but the band, the band didn't make it. Oh. <laughs> did they keep playing though? Because they were paid for the full trip. They, they did. They did. <laughs> they kept playing. They did. Well, I checked. The first thing I did. First thing I asked. Tim, have you got a historic moment you think we should do? The first thing that came to mind when when you were was give, about to tell me that second idea was the idea of the phone call between Kamala Harris and Joe Biden about I'd be ready to take over if you stood aside. However, I don't <laughs> think you should stay aside because you're a great pre- However, if you did, I would. You know what I mean? Like that sort of. Hmm. We're yeah. recording this, obviously, when it's just been announced that Joe Biden won't be running for president and... Um, yeah, Kamala Harris. That would be good. Uh, reluctantly, that would be good. Taking over, reluctantly, um, yes, very reluctantly. Mm. Uh, <laughs> forced to serve. Yes. Great political moments. Yeah, I like that. Anyway, that's my idea. I think it's a great idea, and there's a lot of mm. there's obviously a lot of comedy in it, which is where we took it, obviously, because we were a bit silly. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's and that's a fun way to do it. But particularly, I like going back before history. My idea is very contemporary, which is a little bit predictable. Yes. But going way back is yes. is a really good idea. And yeah. it does. I mean, you know, the Titanic sinking is not is a terrible thing. Lots of people died, but it's long enough ago. It's a long enough ago that I think you are allowed to 
kind of treat it more as history rather than a tragedy current the day news, tragedy. yeah mm. yeah no it's a good it's a good idea you could go right back to um obviously biblical times or to the roman empire um uh, which is also yeah. biblical times <laughs> um <laughs> or other <laughs> other moments uh since uh, over the last two millennia yeah that's a good idea yeah i do like i do, i would like the idea of doing like bible stories hmm. like all right, I'll, let's do a Bible story. Ready? Mm -hmm. You are Jonah. Right. And you've just washed up on the beach after your whole adventure. Yes. And I'm your I'm your mate Dave, who you want to come and pick you up. So you've so you found a phone box like by the sea seafront and you phoned yes. me up to yes. come and pick you up because you've got because you don't know where you're, you you you've got no transport. You've like, you know, you've been through this stuff. Hello, this is Dave. Oh, oh, Dave, mate, how are you? Is that is that you, Jonah? It's it's me. Yes, Joe. How are you? What's going on? I thought you were, last. I heard you were off on a ship or something. Oh, mate, I fell overboard. I fell overboard. They threw me overboard. They threw you overboard. Mm, no, well, they threw me. Yes, well. Mm. Why did they do that? Because I asked. <laughs> You asked them. <laughs> I, did, I, did, I did. I was supposed to be going to Nineveh. I went to Tarshish instead. There was a storm. It's my fault. I was an idiot. They threw me overboard. How can a storm be your fault? It's the I'm weather. I'm such a jerk. I'm such a jerk. God, God. What, you, mm. what was the... The storm was your fault? It was my fault, yes. I disobeyed God. I disobeyed God. He wanted you me to go to... You disobeyed God? What the hell did you do that for? <laughs> I, 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 I know. I know. I know. It's. It's. You should never... I know it. You've always told me, don't disobey God. Oh. But I did. So, you're overboard. So... What happened then? So I, uh, well, well, thankfully, I was in the middle of the ocean, and um, at, but a, a whale came along. You wouldn't believe it. A whale came along and swallowed me. Was it a whale or a big fish? It was a big fish, but his name was right. Wally. So I, so I called him Whale. Called him whale. <laughs> right. Yeah. So what did it like? Does that mean it started like digesting you and stuff, or like what? what no, it was it a eat? bit. Did it hurt? No, it was like in Empire Strikes Back, where they're sort of inside the belly of the thing, <laughs> but oh. they don't realise they're inside the belly of the thing. You know oh. what I mean? I love, I love that film. Yeah, <laughs> right. So it was like that. I didn't. I was just there was like there was air and stuff, and you could walk around. There was a coffee machine, and I was actually reasonably comfortable for several days, <laughs> three days actually. <laughs> Three nights. Was the fish like? Could you talk to the fish or communicate with it, or were you just like sitting in the fish? No, I was in the fish. The fish, fishes mm. aren't like you know sentient. Like I can't, you can't talk to a fish. I mean, God obviously talked to the fish because I feel like God probably you know got the last laugh by getting me picked up that way. But I know I'm inside the big fish and I'm there. What did it smell like? It was pretty fishy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Was there other stuff in there that the fish had swallowed? Uh, coffee machine, as I said. Also, um, <laughs> well, no, I mean, I didn't have. There were, there were other bits and pieces, stuff that gets thrown overboard and so forth. Were there like those like skeletons of fish, like you see in co cartoons, like a yes, you know, where you yes, just see they, its ribs and its head. There were skeletons of things. There was a bottle with like a, a, it said like you know that there was a thing inside it that looked like. A um a memory stick with the unmade podcast written on the side. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it looked like it'd been yeah thrown overboard as well. But yeah, um that was all. That's and it. so what happened then? Did, what, did did the fish like poo you out, or how did you get out of the fish? Threw me up, threw me up. So I think after a while, you know how you sort of touch the back of your tongue and it makes you throw up. Well, I touched uh -huh. the back of his tongue and he made me throw. You like up. gag and, reflexed? Yeah, that's and right. Did it, yeah. I and did you get spat out like into the water or where did you get? Yes, yes, pretty close to shore though. And I just sort of, okay. you know, clambered ashore. And I'm, I, I think I smell gross, which is why I'm called. I need to come over and have a shower. Okay. Um, and then I need to go to Nivenova. I'm not disobeying God again. This is, he's, I tell you what, he's. Why does why convincing. does God want you to go there anyway? To warn them, actually, because they're, uh, oh, well, they're, they're being bad. And he loves them, mm -hmm. and uh, and he and their badness is going to lead to destruction. And he wants to save them. And apparently, I'm to be their messenger for some reason. So now I know God probably won't save them because you know they're pretty bad. But why doesn't God just tell them himself, like he told you to go there? Well, that, this is his way. Like he seems to talk to lots of people these days. Wouldn't it be more believable coming from like God himself? What do you mean from the sky? 
He's sending me. Doesn't he use burning bushes and stuff like that as well? <laughs> Why is a burning bush more convincing than a, a guy that's been- Some dude who claims he was eaten by a fish. <laughs> eaten by a fish together, which, <laughs> Look, it's, it's the story I'm going with, all right? I'm go- <laughs> He's changed my mind all and right. I'm going- why, would, why did you want to go to Tarshish instead? What's there? Were you going to pick up some power converters? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Yeah. No, so I'm going back to Nineveh before the Empire yep. um, okay. comes in destruction. And, and anyway, anyway, come and pick me up. I need you to pick me up. Uh, where are you? Oh, I'm just outside Nineveh. All right. I'm not- <laughs> I'm at Tashish. <laughs> I'll be right there. There we go. Nice work. Could do that all day long. <laughs> it is actually quite good. It's a good road trip kind of game to just do a story. You just keep going and going. I like that yeah. a lot. What's, what's it called? What's the idea called? Imagine the phone call. Imagine the phone call. Yeah, very good. So Tim and I are now going to retire to the request room. We've got lots of questions and suggestions and things from Patreon supporters. We'll be answering those questions. All sorts of interesting things. Mm-hmm, Possibly mm-hmm. some singing. Uh, there's another song request here, Tim. Uh, some interesting oh, questions, actually. Very good questions. So well worth it. Go to uh, patreon.com slash unmadefm to find out more about listening to the little bit of extra audio. And there will also be some of my wife with her lovely English TV presenter voice (gasps) saying things that have been requested. Be still my beating heart. Mm, Some interesting requests, including a piece of baseball commentary, a famous piece of baseball commentary, and and a Harry Potter spell, if that's enough to tempt you over to the request room. Nice. See you there, people.